live. Greetings, unsettled souls. Merry Christmas. Yes, indeed, it is Christmas. I didn't know if I was going to get to this early enough or not, but uh, this way, if you guys are waiting for someone to come to your house on Christmas, hopefully they show up. And uh, you already have this out of the way because I know that some people have followed all 12 days and I, and I thank you. Um, I already got a few as check ringing. Greetings. Welcome aboard. Merry Christmas. Um, the first couple stories that I'm going to get to are a bit grim, but don't worry because uh, as I was saying to my Facebook friends, this is going to be the, uh, the single funniest uh, idea for Christmas Eve ever that I am getting to. At the end of it, uh, Scully over here. I think he hadn't been intoxicated. Um, I didn't get on, as far as I know, I didn't get on InfoWars or Prison Planet. But while I was uh, looking to see if, because uh, for those of you that don't know, my article was in consideration. I did come across two stories that had to do with Christmas. And I guess it does remind everyone that even if uh, maybe you are waiting for somebody on Christmas who didn't show up or won't show up. If something like that is the case, at least, you know, I hadn't, you, I, you hear about all the things that happen in the world pertaining to Christmas in this country being attacked, but that's really nothing uh, compared to the attack that is based in other nations. And it's not just a sneer for saying Merry Christmas or the need to ban Santa Baby because you're worried that it's going to offend someone. Rather, um... There's some very real and tangible threats in the world, and I wanted to just mention a couple, because I think that this, more than anything, is what people worry about when they say that Christmas is under attack, under attack here. Voice of Europe, uh, this is linked on uh, Prison Planet, UK nativity scene destroyed in Ilford, baby Jesus found decapitated. Uh, the nativity scene in Ilford has been destroyed by idiots. The British Pakistani Christian Association paid for and installed the statues to remind people in the high road of the meaning of Christmas. Um, again, th these an, another another verification that it it doesn't matter to many of the radicals of Islam or uh, to other people for that matter whether or not someone is Arab or not, if they are not the particular kind of Muslim, or a Muslim at all, then things like this happen. Okay, did you, they were Pakistanis. Yet in the attack on Christianity, the Virgin Mary and Joseph have been smashed and the infant Jesus was decapitated. Uh, a local non-religious resident told the Ilford reporter that the incident was religious desecration. She said it is three days before Christmas and this happens. Further saying, any other religion and there would have been an outcry and it would have been fixed already. It is a desecration of a religious icon and I am disgusted, she explained. that she had reported it to the Red Bridge Town Hall and that it was not their nativity and that they were out on lunch and that they couldn't do anything about it. Well, I don't expect you to throw your food onto the ground and immediately run to it, but you would think that you would tend to that before you got home. And uh, maybe you put something on the a website that says, hey, you know what, here, uh, we understand something horrible happened and we're going to fix it. No, nothing like that happened. And again, I don't want this to happen to an icon in anyone else, else's religion, but she has a point, doesn't she? You don't see this happening. Um... Other, you should, again, I don't want you to, but if this was happening with other religions, it would be an all-out attack. Unfortunately, we will be able to get another one. We won't be able to get another one in time for Christmas, but we, but we won't be stopped by idiots. We will come back next year with an even bigger one. Uh, in the meantime, I apologize to the people in the borough for the devastation of figurines, which may have been disturbed. We want to be making sure that all religions are living here peacefully. Um, that doesn't look to be the case, which is why you know I wanted to definitely get to this and talk about how it is important to keep an eye on the culture, not because you want to police what someone else is willing to do, but the fact that if there is going to be some kind of tangible attack, a uh, provable attack among any religion, then that, that's the line that's gone too far, 
and in the world that we live in now, it's currently Christians who are facing that kind of persecution. And, of course, the Jewish religion always has. And a lot of times that is tied to really bad politics. That is tied to the Jewish state more than the fact that they are Jewish. However, again, this could be, uh, if somebody ransacked a Buddhist temple, I'd be very upset, particularly if Buddhists were always under attack. Because even if, how do you put this? Even if you are certain that you want to win other people over to your religion, the way to do so is to talk. It's to put up shows like I do, and sometimes they get hit by thousands. Sometimes they get hit by virtually no one. But you put things up and you keep the discussion open. I write articles. Sometimes they blow up huge. Sometimes they sit on the web and nobody reads them at all. But you keep the discussion open. That is important. When we start to do things like decapitate the baby Jesus, um, you know, I, at first I had hoped it was just pranksters. And they will always be. It's the, When it's an all-out attack, that I think it becomes particularly alarming. And that brings us to the last story that we're doing. Paul Joseph Watson, Prison Planet, Swedish TV show celebrates Christmas by featuring Muslim woman who doesn't celebrate Christmas. Now, again, I don't care that she is a Muslim. That's between her and God. My point is, do you think that uh, during Ramadan, there is a chance that you're going to see someone of the Christian faith who doesn't celebrate it on a major network? No, there would, the, the, the studio would be burned down if that happened. Um, however, Sweden's largest television station celebrated Christmas by featuring a Muslim woman wearing a hijab who does not celebrate Christmas. So uh, I haven't been doing the dumb of the day during the uh, Christmas time with this, so I am now. TV4, I'm going to butcher this name, uh, Nyeth Morgan, N-Y-H-E-T-S-M-O-R-G-O-N, showcased the cooking talents of veil-covered Camelia Hamid, who was invited to bake Christmas classics despite not personally recognizing the Christmas festival. Of course you do not celebrate Christmas because you're a Muslim, said program owner Andrew Stobald during the segment. Ahmad replied that she did to celebrate Christmas, and she, but she did like cooking, prompting Philabad to celebrate multiculturalism and the fact that different cultures borrow from each other. When the host asked uh, Hamid if she incorporated any elements of Christmas, Christmas into her life, she responded that snacks and lighting were cozy at this time of year. Earlier this year, the same TV show decided to celebrate the country's traditional midsummer festival by having a Muslim woman in a hijab cook kebabs. Now, again, the point isn't that we don't want to be represented, that we don't want other people represented within the, the network, even on Christmas Day. We don't want to go excluding people on Christmas Day. It's not about hate. It's not about any of that. I hope that the woman who was baking the cookies, I hope her cookies came out absolutely wonderful. And I hope that she has a wonderful Christmas in whatever way she chooses to celebrate. My point is, they didn't have somebody on there baking cross cookies saying, God bless. And any time, but pay attention to this, sort of the, the tie in here. Any time that you have a culture deliberately pulling people away from God, even if you don't believe in God, that's fine. You have to wonder what they're pulling you towards. What precepts are they wanting you to get fed into your head in the media? What message is it that they want? They want to replace God with themselves. All right, friends, and I know that was kind of glum, so I'm going to give you the ultimate, I mean the absolute, absolute funniest thing you can do on Christmas Eve. And I should have said this uh, during the show yesterday, and I forgot. So, hello, oh, look at all, Barb, Marvin, Deidre, Vincent, welcome. Here's what you do on Christmas Eve. Live in an apartment complex, and in this complex, at a balcony, and there were rows and rows of apartments on both sides, probably 30 of them. And I was on the top floor, on the third floor, on the very end. 
and with sliding doors that go into your patio. What I would do is around 3, 3.30 in the morning, maybe 4, I would open the door, poke my head out, and as loud as I possibly could, I would say, ho, 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 and then I would shut the door. Because every single child in that complex just thought that they heard Santa either coming or most likely going. Therefore, it is now time to get up and get your Christmas presents. <sighs> yeah. Parents likely wanted to kill whoever it was. Now that they know I'm dead. All right, friends. Good night. God bless. Uh, remember, um, if you are with your husband or wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, give them a very, very big hug. Them. And you got presents under your tree, table full of food. You got it made, my friends. Good night. God bless. Oh, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs>